We're exploring careers in engineering. Engineers design the world around us. Whatever we're interacting with, they either built it or they're making it better. We're at Olson Associates, a Nebraska-born company that stretches from Kearney to Omaha, even across the country. Let's go see what they're up to. Brian is the Nebraska region leader for Olson Associates, and as far as I can tell, Olson does pretty much everything. Well, yeah, you know, it kind of seems that way. We don't do everything, but we sure do a lot of things. We are a design engineering firm, and so we design the world around you. And so the road that you drove in on this morning, the water you drank when you brushed your teeth, the when you flushed the toilet, the wastewater that left your house. We're getting very detailed here. We are. We're getting to know each other really well. <laughs> wow. Those are the kinds of things that Olson Associates designs for the world around us. And your job as Nebraska region leader, what's that like? Well, it's great. I get to... Uh, on the operational side, I get to work with all of our offices in Nebraska and make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing in terms of the engineering work. So are we doing a good job for our clients? Are we turning out quality designs that make the world run just a little bit better around us? And getting into this role was an interesting process for you. It was, yeah, it was a little bit of this. I didn't start out at Olson. I'm a mechanical engineer by degree and I designed heavy equipment cranes for the first 10 years of my career. And uh, I came down to Olson and, and they said, you know what, come on board and we'll figure it out as we go. So 15 years later, I get to do fun stuff like this. There you go. Yeah. Well, Brian, I'd love to get to know the company a little more. Can you introduce me to a young professional? Sure, I'd be happy to. I'll go introduce you to one of our young engineers right now. Perfect. This is Katie. She is a team leader at Olson. Now, team leader's a pretty vague description, mm. so help us. What are the details? Yeah, so I oversee a team of about 25 people, um, both civil engineers and landscape architects, um, and then we also have technicians and designers. Um, and uh, yeah, I just kind of oversee the workload and make sure things are going smoothly on a day-to-day -day basis and oversee hiring and that kind of thing. Now you're a civil engineer yourself. I am. What's that like? What does a civil engineer do? Yeah, so I'm actually on the general civil team. So we work on a lot of land development projects. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, it's uh, very diverse. Our, our work type is really diverse. Hmm. Um, we do anything from commercial developments to residential developments. Um, we are involved in a pedestrian bridge currently. Um, it's a lot of different things that um, take a lot of different components of civil engineering into one discipline. Now, how did you know that you wanted to be a civil engineer? So I started out taking drafting classes in high school, um, and I really enjoyed that. And um, my dad was an industrial technology teacher, and he showed me pictures of floor plans in this book that he nice. had. And uh, I just thought that was really cool, you know, taking a bird's eye view hmm. of something and laying it out and sort of having control over, you know, how people are going to live in a sense, sort of. Um, and so civil engineering is similar to that. It's just um, on a larger scale, much larger scale. Our projects range from a half an acre to 200 acres. Wow, and that's even across the country with Olson, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, that's correct. Now you mentioned how people live, but you also work with the environment and animals, plants. Mm -hmm. You were involved in a project recently that was helping to determine environmental impact and mm -hmm. kind of keep the earth green. Mm -hmm. I was, so there was a creek channel uh, that was um, on one of our projects that was severely incised, it was in bad shape. And um, we said, okay, we're gonna come in here and sort of lay the uh, banks back, um, create sort of a uh, flood area, um, hold back some of the water so that um, the, the area downstream wouldn't be impacted by large mm. rain events as much. Uh, we worked with the city of Omaha on that. And um, we were impacting some wetlands with that uh, project and we said, okay, yeah, Corps of Engineers, we're removing a lot of wetlands, but mm. here's all the wetlands that we think are gonna develop um, when we redo this stream channel. And five or six years later, we found that there's actually more wetlands that have developed um, go. than we thought there would be. So that's always good. You're leaving it better than you found it. That's right. Now, you started at Olson in a unique way. While you were still in college, you began an internship mm -hmm. with them. I did, yeah. I started when I was a sophomore, actually, here in the Lincoln office, and then transferred up to Omaha when I graduated. But um, I really enjoyed that. Olson. That's kind of Olson's MO, um, is to hire 
uh, students, um, and we give a lot of responsibility to our students, and so it's it's pretty fun. You get um, on-the-job training while you're still in school. There you go. So if someone's thinking maybe I could do this, that sounds awesome. What would be the next step for them? Um, I would say go to your career fairs. I mean, I always kind of enjoyed walking around and finding out uh, what the uh, engineering companies were about. Um, and then uh, I, I was lucky enough to know someone at Olson um, who got me, I actually shadowed someone at Olson. And normally people at engineering companies are open to doing that, even if they don't have a job opening for students. Um, the fact that I shadowed, I think, you know, later on uh, was a plus for me when hmm. I interviewed for the job. That's great. Well, Katie, thanks so much. Really yeah. appreciate getting to know you. You're welcome. Maybe you could join Olson and build up the world. We're taking a look at careers in renewable and sustainable energy, powering our world without draining it. We're in Columbus, Nebraska, and Nebraska Public Power District. And uh, I'm gonna go see who I can talk to. I'm with MPPD's Manager of Sustainable Energy, Dave Rich. Dave, thanks for meeting with me. Why don't you tell me what you guys do? Well, uh, I'm glad to meet with you. We're responsible for generating electricity and delivering it to customers throughout outstate Nebraska. Nice. And uh, how do you guys generate that electricity? We have a combination of resources, nuclear, coal, natural gas, hydro, wind. Okay. So like every single way you could generate Just electricity? Just about. We, there's a lot of benefits of having a diverse generation mix, yes. Wow. And how many different careers does it take to, you know, to get electricity out to the people? It's a tremendous wide range. We have engineers, architects, we have business majors, we have accounting people, we have linemen. Mm -hmm. uh, various other types of technicians, scientists, a wide range of people that work here. How many people does MPPD employ? Approximately 2,100 full-time and about another 40 part-time people. Wow, and so, so many different careers. You're going to see just a wide swath, I guess, of different uh, educational backgrounds? Yes, yes, very. Uh, we hire a lot of college graduates, a lot of two-year graduates, uh, and you know we hire some without uh, degrees, but uh, mm -hmm. most of them have some type of certification or degree. Okay, so most people start at least a two-year degree, and they're going on to get advanced degrees, masters, doctorates. For example, yes, I started with a four-year electrical engineering, went back and got graduate electrical engineering, and then an MBA. So wow. many, many people have MBAs at NPPD. So you've been working at NPPD for a while, right? Correct. 30, uh, 35 years. Okay, you must love it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a great time. It's mm -hmm. been a great time. What's it like working here? Well, you know, we are challenged, and, and you enjoy the challenges. You really enjoy the people you work with, and you work for Nebraskans. And mm -hmm. there's that proud work ethic that you see every day working here. That's great. So if you would picture your perfect employee, what would he or she be like? First of all, you know, the attitude is so important, you know, and, and I think if we had, in my head, my choice, I'd hire somebody local from Nebraska as compared to outstate, the, the probability that they continue to work here. Again, you want to make sure they've had a good education background. Uh, you really want to find out what they want to do in life uh, and make sure there's a match for the job opening you have and what, uh, what they're looking for. Great. Thanks so much, Dave. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go see who else I can find. Right, good luck and enjoy the discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. James Lassenheiser is an energy efficiency consultant here at MPPD, and I can call you Jim, right? That's correct. So tell us what you do day to day. As you said, I'm an energy efficiency consultant. What we do is we go into commercial and industrial businesses, as well as residential homes, and tell them how to be more energy efficient and try to find out where they're wasting energy, how they can save money by improving their energy efficiency in their businesses. So. Wow, so you have an engineering degree to do that. That's correct. How did you get into this field? Well, when I started as a kid, I worked with uh, my, my family as building homes mm -hmm. and was in high school doing projects and trying to design little things and I decided I wanted to go to a tech school and started working with my hands. So I got a two-year degree there in electronics and I decided, you know what, this is not enough. I need to get an engineering degree. So I went on to a four-year college and got my engineering degree there. Mm -hmm. And then you started work at MPPD after that? That's correct. Right out of college, I applied to MPPD mm -hmm. and they hired me at uh, Cooper Nuclear Station in Brownville, Nebraska. Wow. So what made you go into energy efficiency? Well, while I was there, I was working with large motors, mm -hmm. and one of the things that they were starting to focus on is how can you make them more energy efficient. So I started talking about it, and uh, that was my job, and I decided, 
you know, I'm going to talk with a couple of my other friends and see if they have something in MPPD that I can get into energy efficiency more. And uh, I called up the energy efficiency department and they had a job available. So I applied for it and got the job. Yeah, now this isn't your typical engineering job because you're working directly with people all the time. That's correct. With Cooper, when I first started, I was sitting at a desk and designing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to get out to help people. And so I took this job, which works with customer service, and helped them to be more green. Wow. So what's your favorite part about MPPD? My favorite part is working with customers. You know, be able to get out there and they have a problem or something's going on, I'll be able to resolve it for them and help them out. So I'm always ha happy to see them smile. So, wow. Well, yeah. Jim, thanks for talking with me. Yep. Appreciate it. Appreciate learning about MPPD. Mm -hmm. They're keeping the lights on and keeping the earth green. We've explored careers in energy and engineering, but here in Clarks, Nebraska, there's a company that fuses them both to get us the fuel that drives our lives. They're not making it for us, they're not selling it to us, but by building things like this, they're getting it where it needs to go. It's kind of energy in motion. That's Strobel Energy Group. This is Heather Webb. She's the Human Resources Director here at Strobel. Tell us about the company. So we are a company that does engineering, procurement, and construction, and we partner with different clients that take, have us come in and take a green field and design that, engineer it, and construct it into something that can move product. And that product can be oil, it can be corn, it can be sand, it doesn't matter. Um, the last several years, we've been focused more in the crude oil industry. And so we go in and that can be anywhere from rail to structure to buildings to moving all the ground, dirt work on the ground, all of that and um, a lot of electrical. Well, building something from the ground up, that's pretty unique for a company to do. Absolutely, yes. We pride ourselves on able to take it from napkin to turnkey. Oh, napkin so, to turnkey. Yes. I've never heard of that. That's yes. cool. There you go. <laughs> yes. Do you have those napkins laying around somewhere? We, we could, actually probably do. I bet I could go back and find some of those. <laughs> and now we're going to find Strobel's work like throughout Nebraska and then even beyond that. Absolutely. A lot of our work is actually going to be a lot further than Nebraska. North Dakota, Texas, we've done some <laughs> stuff in Louisiana. We are actually working on a project in Columbus, Nebraska right now, which is pretty exciting. Something new that we haven't done in a long time. Wow. Ever. Walk us through that napkin to turnkey process. Yes. So our business development, which ha actually happens to be the owner of our company that founded our company, hmm. underneath his grandpa and his father's wing, he will go out and meet with these clients in the very, very early stages. And it may be over dinner, they're drawing on a back of a napkin. Hmm. And they're saying, we need something built to help store and move our corn or our resources, absolutely. some of this fuel. This fuel, yes, absolutely. And so then he brings that back to the team here where he'll get around a table with some of our project managers, our engineers, our designers, and here's what the client's envisioning. Let's make it happen for them. Hmm. A lot of times these clients, it's, it's not even about about money, it's about relationship. And hmm. they believe that we can get the project done and that we've had some successful projects and they see that. Um, in the ener energy world, it's a very small world as much as you wouldn't think it is, but you run into a lot of the same key players throughout the energy sector. I'd love to get to know Strobel a little bit more. Is there somebody you can introduce me to? Absolutely, Jason is one of our engineers here on staff. Perfect. This is Jason Babcock, the Director of Engineering here at Strobel. Tell us what your job's all about. Yeah, uh, my I am the director of engineering, and uh, so I lead a group of engineers, and we do engineering for construction projects um, as we get out into the field of uh, loading and unloading energy products. That sounds like kind of a high-risk, high-reward kind of thing. Yeah, you know, these projects can take a year, two years sometimes to actually progress through the engineering stage and construction stage and, and startup. Yeah, and Strobel's reach is uh, more than statewide, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, we've done projects in Texas and North Dakota, Louisiana, um, even had some design work. We go into Mexico and Canada. Hmm. So we have uh, done a little bit of work uh, across the nation, really. Now, Jason's got some initials after his name, something I've always wanted. I always wanted like an LTD or like a TM after my name. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. tell me about yours, PE and PMP, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, PE stands for Professional Engineer, and I'm licensed in the state of Nebraska as a mechanical professional engineer. I stamp drawings and, and 
the state knows that I'm authorized to design this work and uh, provide this surface to, to the area. I like to make you know things safe for people and the environment. We and appreciate so that's, it. So, so, yeah. uh, the PMP is Project Management Professional. Um, that's more of a, just a certification. Um, for both of them, I did have to take an exam. The professional engineering uh, requires that I actually have four years of experience before I even get to take the exam. Wow. And then I have to have references and schoolwork and all that behind it uh, to get the PE license. Gotcha. So I'm going yeah. for some easier initials to find okay, somewhere. Okay, yeah. What do you like about it the most? Um, you know, I, I enjoy... Um, working with, with process and with, with steam. I mean, if we think about steam and water and, and the way it creates power for us, um, it's kind of fun. You know, you think of a cubic centimeter, a cubic inch of water and what it does, how you heat it up, create steam, it runs a generator that provides power to you on a daily basis and plug in your phone or your computer. And uh, so, so the power needs really come from the energy that we create. So a little thing of water can power my phone. Yeah, okay. yeah, for Gotta a little bit. That out. Right. Water has ruined my phone in the past, like <laughs> yeah. multiple times. That's, yeah. Well, it sounds fascinating. I'd love to just take a quick look at a project you're working on, if that's, some, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, we've got something we can take a look at here in our model. Nice. So what are we looking at? So here we're looking at a loadout platform for a rail loading facility. Hmm. So trains yeah. coming in and out, getting yep. loaded up with stuff or like unloading. Yeah, and this is a loading platform, so we're loading uh, 14 rail cars at the same time. Wow. So you're, you're bringing it in, in here, uh, you have piping that's allowing the product that you need to load um, up through this pipe and out into a loading arm that reaches out over the rail car. So this design is like a team of people are working to build this design on this program. Yeah, it takes several engineers and designers uh, time to walk through the design, think about the design, and maybe do revisions on the design as well. So you'll have a structural engineer doing the structural part of it. Um, uh, this person is going to spend time actually evaluating it, probably with software, hmm. on if this structure will hold people and hold the equipment up where yeah. it's supposed to go. So you're thinking about the columns. Uh, are the columns strong enough to hold everything up that they need to be? You know, you see things like cross bracing, so it doesn't want to fall over like a domino and things like that. So structural engineers taking some time to go through that process, make sure it's going to stand up when the wind blows. That's incredible. And what specifically are you looking at in this? Because you're not doing everything. Right. So I am a mechanical engineer, so a lot of my time would be spent looking at the piping, the product in the piping, what type of product is it? How big a pumps do I need to push mm. that fluid through? How many valves do I have in there? What are the restrictions in that piping to make this pipe work well? Okay. Um, so, so yeah, my part of it is probably looking at the piping more so, although I look at the overall part of it as well too. But we have a team of people that are looking at that and making sure it's all right. Uh, so it's not just one guy does it, we have a review process we go through as well. And have you ever been to see this in like the real world? Yeah. IRL. Yeah. So this is a complete project. Uh, I believe it's in North Dakota. We've been up there, walked along the grading, and watched it actually put product into the rail car. Carved your name in there. Said J B. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I did that. Uh, you know, my pocket knife wouldn't be sharp enough. But <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, Jason. Thanks for telling me a little bit about Strobel. Yeah. Appreciate it. And uh, our energy's in good hands.